yeah, I th- and you know, maybe it was it came up at the right time in the right place because it you know it really appealed to m- the skills I already had, and it also was going to teach me the skills I needed to um, s- set up and start up the business. Rhiannon talks there about the fact that something came up at the right time and her being in the right place. Now we're not always that lucky that things do come up at the right time and in the right place for us to get started on a, on a business idea, but it did for her. And she recognised it. She was aware that she had certain skills, as she says, and this particular thing that she went on would give her the skills to get her business started. And I think it's very smart to know right up front what your skills are And then also recognise what other skills you need in order to get started in business. I really love this particular episode talking to Rihanna because she's a a master baker, let's call her, and she bakes bread. I I love bread. I've been a, a bread addict all my life. I've been reducing some of it over the last couple of years, but if there is some really quality, nice, fresh bread nothing beats it. And I'm sure some of you who are listening are exactly the same. So learn about Rhiannon's story and also how she got into baking bread. And now she's teaching the world how to do it. Enjoy. Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Welcome to the Share Your Story podcast, Rhiannon. How are you today? I'm very well, Michael. Thanks ever so much for having me on the show. Thank you very much for coming on the show. I know we're going to be talking about a topic that is very, very close to my heart, (laughs) which we can dive into a little bit as well. And um, so I'm really excited to hear your story and and really appreciative of you spending the time chatting with me today. Um, To begin with, I ask all my guests the same opening question. I bet my listeners are really bored of it now, but I don't care. It's a really good opening question. And that is, tell us a little bit about your personal life to begin with. So where were you born? Transition into your education? Have you moved around the country where you now live? Any kind of personal things that you think we might love to know and learn about you. Over to you, Rhiannon. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, yeah, a big question. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I, well, I, I was born and raised in Hertfordshire. So, yeah, I've always grown up uh, uh, in and uh, near London. And I think uh, kind of related to my business, my first memories uh, often involve kind of cooking and baking. It was a big part of family life when I was right. growing up. And, uh, you know, I've always got involved and my my parents really enjoyed um, having people over and we'd always be kind of pressed in to help cook food or especially bake. And I can remember an early memory being asked to make pastry uh, by my mum. And wow. it it turned out really well. She told me what to do, you know, rub the butter into the flour. And I think she came back and um, the pastry I made was really good. And that then turned into my job. Um, she was a bit surprised. And I certainly had a great sense of achievement. And I think from there, I got the kind of baking bug. And it was always something I did as a child to help out in the kitchen. We'd have um, an afternoon and we'd always put kind of music on really loudly. And I still kind of find it hard not to put music on if I'm in the kitchen I always want to uh-huh. sing along um but yeah when we'd uh, enjoy cooking and baking and um creating lots of great food and you know really enjoy that creating something lovely that you can share with uh, family and friends mm. um and that's uh, you know love that I've kind of carried on and um but baking for me as well is also quite precise and scientific there's quite a lot of science in it and i think uh, when i have people on classes they often comment that if they're they're cooking something you know you can throw in a bit more salt or a bit more sugar and balance out the flavors if something's not quite right whereas in baking if you start off with the wrong amounts um it sometimes it does tend to go um, fairly wrong quite quickly um and that appealed to me as well i did enjoy my science at school as well as um learning languages that was something else I love to do and finding out really about, <laughs> languages 
Yeah, I loved learning languages at school, and I, I did, uh, I did as many as I possibly could, and I thought it was a fascinating way to find out about other cultures as well. And I think you really get to know um, a lot more about you know people in their country when you learn more mm. about you know, the words they have and how they describe things and how they talk about things and kind of the, the little um, what you call idioms and you know, the little ways they say things in which different languages, languages did you do. So I did um, mainly did French, Spanish and Russian. That was what I did at kind of um, GCSE. And then I did French A-level. And um, I also did a bit of German. And then I did Latin and ancient Greek as well. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed learning them, but all quite romantic languages. So um, I've not dabbled in anything kind of, you know, for example, Chinese or anything like that. So mm. that'd be the next challenge, perhaps. <laughs> um um, but, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And, mm. uh, I guess there was a, a kind of toss up there when I did my A-levels. I, I think French was the first one I wanted to do, but, um, I also wanted to do sciences. I ended up also doing biology and chemistry and that led on to me doing a science degree, um, did a biochemistry master's at university. So, um, still had that love of languages, but ended up focusing on the science, um, and did four years, of science at university and, you know, did a lot, um, considering I now bake so much with yeast, I did a lot of study of yeast as well at university. So really fascinated to find out more about, you know, the world around me. And I, you know, I'm, I'm still I have that fascination now about, you know, finding out about how things work and understanding them. And, um, yeah. and I still use that, bring out that aspect out when I'm teaching people about bread baking. Um, I find it really interesting. It's a great way of understanding why your bread is going really well, or perhaps it's not turned out quite how you expected. Mm, mm. So, uh, um, and then after university, I was, I was ready to get a job. So obviously there was one path there potentially of a science career, but actually I decided to, um, actually go and, um, get a job rather than carry on studying. And, um, I, I went into local government, which a lot of people don't see the connection. But for me, it was actually a world I knew very well because both my mum and my granddad had had um, careers in local government for right. their career. So I was very aware of the world of local government. I you know, spent a lot of time, you know, when you go into work with your parents, um, you know, going into council offices and understanding yes. what goes on. So um, and I when I was at university, it was where I did my kind of summer jobs, you know, I'd go and get a job. Right, right. Temp temping yeah. somewhere uh, in the council, just doing admin for the for the summer, for example. So um, I then joined a graduate training scheme in local government um, and actually moved up to Leeds, which is such a fantastic city. Um, it's a great place to live um, and had a, a wonderful two years there on a graduate training scheme, uh, met lots of people. Uh, made friends um, and got to know much more about the world of local government. And then I actually then moved back to a job in central London. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have moved around the country a little bit. Um, and um, I worked in policy in local government. So very varied role. Um, it can mean anything from managing contracts with the voluntary sector to um, researching economic policy. So there was a lot of kind of fact finding, which appealed to kind of my research degree background yeah. um, and creating policy and um, working on a whole number of different projects. So that was um, my life for about seven or eight years after I left university. Yeah. And um, But unfortunately, I also started to go through quite a lot of reorganizations um, where I worked. Um, obviously, there were staff reorgs and there were um, lots of changes. Mm. And I became quite unhappy. I was in a role that I didn't really recognize. And I think that's um, a p potentially a situation a lot of people find themselves in that um, you, know, you find yourself in a role that you don't recognize and it's perhaps not giving you fulfillment that it was. Um, and I decided to, to leave and was temping. Um, so there was a big career change for me. So that was kind of 2012, 2013. Yeah. And it was a, a big change. Um, obviously, you've been on one trajectory where you know, you've gone into the grad scheme and gone into um, one career path. And yeah, you know, you've progressed um, through into a job. And so to have that change very quite suddenly, um, it did take a time, I think, to kind of sort out what I wanted to do. But at the time, I was thinking, I actually want to do a little bit of something for myself. And right. I was considering kind of, should I think about doing something from home that I can um, build myself? And that was when I um, discovered the Bread Angels course. Okay, so hold, hold on a second before we dive into that. That yep. sounds... So how long were you in the go local government for? I think about seven, seven or eight years. Right, yeah. right. 
So that's like, yeah, kind of seven year itch then you got. But maybe, what, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And well, it's also a cycle, isn't it? They say things come into seven year cycles usually. And, and do you, how did, where did the thing come from where you said maybe do something for myself uh, from home? Where did that, how did that come into your head or, or in your awareness? I think it was partly because uh, I came across the the Bread Angels course, which is teaching people to set up a bread bakery from home. And it was almost like this realization that people were doing that. And I think even then, so that was 2012, I think even then it wasn't quite as common to work for yourself from home, but mm -hmm. it was becoming something that more and more people were doing. Yeah. And so once I realized that actually that could be an option, um, I started to think, well, actually, I'd like to look into that more. And I had previously said I'd really like to work for myself or do something where I can use a whole lot of my skills yes. and, and maybe gain more skills. And actually, um, I think just seeing the Bread Angels course at the right time kicked that into action. And right. I, I thought, I'm going to do the course and learn not only a bit more about bread baking, but obviously the course teaches you the basics of setting up your business from home. So there's kind of the legal and administrative side of that and maybe the marketing. Um, and that just really, really um, piqued my interest. And set the ball rolling in a whole different direction right okay so the it was the bread angels course you saw first that gave you the idea perhaps yes i think it was more that i'd thought about doing it but only in a very kind of abstract way and thought well you know is that something i could do but what would i actually do from home right. and but when i came across the bread angels course it was almost like it brought it into focus and there was like ah oh, there's something you know i've had this lifelong enjoyment of baking it's something i love to do and it's a skill i have that i could also it looks like other people are turning that into a business and here's something that i could do to turn yeah. it into a business right right so, right so i think that's where it went mm, okay so that, that's really interesting because you were almost like searching for something and then because you were searching, going, oh, what could I do? And then you came across that. It kind of the two, you know, it was like, I'm looking for something. I'm looking for something. Oh, how about that? That's just come in front of me. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I and, you know, maybe it was, it came up at the right time in the right place because yes. it, you know, it really appealed to the skills I already had. And it also was going to teach me the skills I needed to um, set up and start up the business. And Brilliant. also, I think um, you going back to what you were saying about wanting to do something for myself. I think it was just kind of rediscovering that confidence and the skills that I you know, I knew I had, but I perhaps wasn't using. Yeah. And, you know, um, perhaps I'd got to that point in my job, you know, I wasn't happy where I was and uh, I just wanted to do a bit more with the skills I had. So yeah, retraining at that time was a, was probably the best thing for me. Mm, amazing. Okay. So Bread Angels, it was called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the Bread Angels is uh, a network of um, people who run their own small or micro bakery from home. Mm -hmm. So uh, set up by a lady called Jane Mason, and she had her own um, uh, wholesale career change. Um, but she want, she enjoyed baking as well, and she wanted to kind of teach people to set up a similar business. So mm -hmm. the Bread Angels course was born of that. And uh, on the course, you, as I said, you learn about bread baking, and you also learn about setting up the basics of a business from home. And um, I think uh, it, on retraining on that, I also got to join a whole network of people who've also done the course. So right. it's really supportive from the off. Mm -hmm. And that really helped me as well. And, you know, I've made really great friends through doing the course and getting to know the network. So that was another benefit for me, because when you start out on your own, it can be a bit lonely and a bit overwhelming. Definitely. And having, having that network to fall back on um, and ask questions of uh, was really, really helpful. So it was kind of a two pronged thing, not just the training, you didn't just kind of get given the book and told to go off, but actually get that network of support as well. Yes. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was, it's a really great community and still exists today. So hundreds of people have taken that bread angels course and doing, um, doing a, making their own micro bakery and however they like to interpret it, um, in their community to kind of bring great bread to the local people around them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was uh, it was kind of in at the deep end for me. Um, I didn't have any experience of running my own business. Um, right. 
So there was plenty to learn. And uh, once I'd done the course at the end of 2012, I um, I took six months. I was still temping. I took six months to think about what I was going to do and how mm-hmm. I was going to start that business. Right. And I was very lucky that my local council, actually, if you're a local business, uh, I'm based here in Epsom in Surrey now. So um, I right. should also mention that uh, in between points, I also got married and made a classic move out of London into the suburbs but out to (laughs) some so um so yeah living out in epsom and uh, still based out here in surrey now and uh so my local council here in epsom um actually if you've got a local business you can have uh, a market store so they support that in the week um so i was able to have a market store and bring along my bakes um so once i'd set up the business could bake bread and actually bring it down to test it and see how well it's sold and on the first the first day that I did that it was a beautiful May sunny day and I sold about 70% of what I took down just by you know talking to the lunchtime trade in the market square and it was a great kind of affirmation I think of uh, actually I think I might be on to something here so that's where it started and I then um, secured a farmer's market stall and also had other stalls uh, in Epsom Market uh, Square. And I did, ran the farmer's market stall, going back to my Bread Angels network. I actually ran it with two other Bread Angels. So, ah, right. Uh, you shared the cost then, did you? Yeah, so I shared the cost. And also, in terms of baking from home, you do do smaller amounts. So it's nice to be able to fill a market stall with the three of you, know, three of you yes. baking. You can get a good range of products. And we had that farmer's market stall for about 18 months and you know, really built um, a you know, you built a customer base through that. People knew you were there. They'd come back. They'd have favorite breads. You got to know what people wanted and the kind of questions they asked and, you know, uh, what they liked to eat and find out more about bread baking. Yes. And actually, um, I built up a good customer base there with local customers. But um, another strand of the Bread Angels Network is teaching bread, bread classes, so teaching other people to bake mm-hmm. bread. Yeah. And after about six months, so in early 2014, I started teaching and obviously I built a customer base through my market stores. Um, but I also was able to advertise the classes there. And um, I discovered once I did the first um, class, that I absolutely loved it. I really loved teaching the bread making. And it was just such a sense of achievement um, that people could bake bread. And um, when it comes out of the oven, you have that wow moment. <laughs> And people can't believe almost that they bake such beautiful and delicious yeah. smelling bread. And it's mm. still my favorite part of any class when people see their, <laughs> their freshly yeah, baked bread. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Come out the oven. <laughs> so I, I, I want to wind back at just a tiny bit about the market stalls that you yeah. did for 18 months with, with your colleagues. Yeah. Um, just the stupid questions come up in my head. If you've got all the bread, it's one market stall, correct? Yeah. And you've all brought, did they make different products to you? Did you decide in advance what to make? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we did coordinate it. And okay. uh, we'd have a range. So we'd have like, say, one or two basic loaves each. And then we'd all do our specialty loaves. So, you know, you're putting things like fruit and nuts and flavours into your bread, cheese, yes. things like that. So we'd all have a different specialty. And uh, maybe someone would make, sometimes I would make things like shortbread biscuits or brownies. You know, There's a, a slight variation. Right. So, yeah, we'd all have different products. And we were pretty au okay with what everyone had. And we were happy to, we'd all have a different um uh, change pot so then you could you could easily have someone pay for their bread and it would not <laughs> you could easily uh, take the change out of the relevant person's pot etc so keeping the cash flow separate but you did keep least- the cash flow how did you do that if all the bread is mixed well you might have lines on there to do did you have did you split it up so that each of you would only get the money for your merchandise yeah, absolutely. So we knew which 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 was our bread and which was our colleagues' bread. So once right. you sold the loaf, you just knew that was that money into that pot, and um, you know you kept the money separate. So got you. Yeah, it okay. Really well. Um. Yeah. So yeah, um, I, I, that's a really. I'm sorry to ask that question. I know it sounds <laughs> obvious, but I didn't know if you said, okay, well, we'll just put all the money together and then just share it at the end of it, or just keep the money separate. Uh, for the actual bread that was sold, um, it's, no, it's absolutely. It's, 
Yeah, it was, it's I just, mean, there's got to be an element of trust there, and there, obviously there yes. was, and um, we were all happy to support each other because um, I think what's fantastic about when you have a, a market store and if you are starting a business, this is you know is one way to really test your audience. You yeah. Know, stand out there in a public place and you know nobody knew me and I didn't know anything about my customers but no. it was a very public facing but a very quick way to find out you know do people enjoy my product and are people going to buy it and are they going to come back and buy it again and all of those questions were answered for me doing that market stall but also you get to chat to people and I'd never um, done anything particularly public facing like that in a job but actually it turned out I really enjoyed it and I really loved getting to know people and perhaps that's that going back to that like learning language Languages thing, you know, I just enjoy finding out about people. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was happy to always have a conversation with people who came up to the market store. It didn't obviously didn't have to be about bread, but more often than not, people would come and they'd ask questions, and you could uh, engage in a conversation with them that meant that they built up a, a relationship with you as a person, but also as a business. And people got to know me, and you know, I still know people. You know, um, I don't bake to sell bread anymore, but I still know people in and around Epsom who were customers of mine back then. You know. Six, yes. seven years ago. Yeah. And um, that's yeah, really, really helped. And I think building those relationships really help. And I, you know, if I was saying to someone who's starting, especially a food business, because if you're creating a really beautiful food product that, you know, if you put it in front of someone, they can smell it and they can see it and they might mm. want to taste it. You know, it's mm. a great way for people to actually get their food out there for other people to start to find out about. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, there are certain things about bread that gets into i don't know i don't know if it's goes back to our forefathers and mothers i don't know but it it's something you know supermarkets often do this don't they when they when they've got their own bakery in supermarkets they will pipe the smell of the bread either into the store or outside the store in the car park <laughs> to attract people in. That's actually a tactic to get people into coming to the bread counter because, of course, to go to the bread counter, you've got to walk past everything else because it's usually right at the back in the corner somewhere. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so strategically, it's not at the front, is it? It's, it's no, at you the can't back. pop in for a loaf. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, yeah, fascinating. Well, I, I was curious about the money taking thing because you were doing effectively a very early collaboration with people. And were they uh, women, the, the other two people? Yeah, two other ladies, yeah. Yeah, they were the two other ladies were women. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, you mentioned this word called trust. And if there were three guys doing it, I'm not ah, okay. Bakers may be different, but there might not be as much trust. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's a really important thing in, you know, collaboration in business to have that element of trust really early on. Um, yeah, I, sorry to have picked up on it, but I just think it's fascinating that that's that's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't comment on the, the setup, uh, I think, mm. but I think you have to kind of know whoever you're working with. Yeah. Do you trust them? And, you know, how, how much of a, um, how much of a collaboration or risk do you want to go into basically with, in terms of doing the stool and having that support? And I think, mm. I don't want to say I'm lucky. I think I, you know, I, I got to know my two friends as they are yes. um through doing the bread angels network and um you know obviously i couldn't guarantee that everyone else i would work with fine but i think i found two people that um that i could work with and that we had a really good working relationship and we were able to support each other in business and yes. you know we um it, it, we helped each other um grow our relative our respective businesses um through doing that stall and obviously through other activities but you know that was that support was there and i think that's actually been something that's been a kind of theme for me in running a business you know you can have that challenge of uh you know sometimes you might feel lonely or you might feel that you've got on a constant learning curve about starting up a business and it can be overwhelming the amount of stuff you have to do um but for me community and having um those kind of online especially online communities but also in person networking um has been really really 
crucial to helping me set up and run my business. And I hope I've been able to help other people as well that if I'm finding something difficult or I've got a question, I knowing that I have networks to kind of fall back on and to ask for support and give that support back as well. Yes. has been really, really helpful. Great. Um, Sounds and I've, great. I've, kind of, I've, I've really looked to, to, to develop that um, mm. as part of kind of doing my business. Yeah. Fabulous. Um, but no, I just say, uh, I think networking has, has really, really helped. And I think if you're thinking about the challenges of running a business, you know, you can have, you know, self-belief as well. Um, I said at the beginning, you know, I, I was thinking about running my own business and doing something for myself, but actually when it happens, it's kind of hard to say, Oh, I'm a business owner now. And I, yes. what, do you, what do you call yourself? You, you can't really be the chief exec of yourself. <laughs> it's only me <laughs> running this business. <laughs> Just, I'm a business owner. You know, I'm the yes. director of the board and the chief exec. I'm, you know, you're everything. <laughs> you, you start doing yes. the finance and you do the marketing and you do, and you might not even give you, you probably don't give it those labels. Uh, you just do what you do because you need to set up and run your business. And there's lots going going on and I think um, for me it's taken a long time but also seeing other people's feedback on my business has has kind of helped you know when people say oh I've you know I've seen you online or and they give a nice review or um, I'm you know it's just really great to see that feedback and think actually some some of the stuff I'm doing (laughs) is actually growing a business that is working for me Um, Mm, mm. and but yes it's a constant learning curve and as I say I think having those um, networks for me and especially online I think um, that's also grown exponentially in say the last five years, having support networks online and, and kind of coaching groups or membership groups. And it's kind of finding one that suits you really, of but course. having ones that you can turn to and you know, there's a community of people there who actually understand what you're doing through running a small business. Um, it's something that I would, if you're starting thinking of starting up a small business or you are running a small business, if, if you're not networking, you don't need to even leave the house if you don't have if you don't aren't able to, or mm. you know, I, I have small children now as well. So things like breakfast networking and many networking meetings are just not uh, easy for me to get to because it's a lot of time out my day, but at least online I can, I can drop in and help people or get help at any yes. time. Yes. That's really helpful. Um, but yeah, it's been, uh, okay. been a good <laughs> So, so I, and I interrupted you with all the kind of market stall kind of income and everything. So the market stall stopped. Why did it stop? Well, the market stall stopped for me um, shortly before I had my um, eldest child. Oh, so fair enough. Yeah. After I- <laughs> Good enough reason. <laughs> so once I had my eldest, I stopped doing the market stalls and I just focused on teaching bread making classes um, because that was uh, easier for me to fit around. And I absolutely loved the teaching and I yes. wanted to grow that side of my business. So I decided to focus on that. And so I don't bake to sell anymore, but instead I've developed a whole range of bread making classes. Um, and I started with like an introduction to bread making and now I do a whole range. Um, so that's what the direction that my business has taken now. And um, uh, I also, after I had my uh, first child, uh, talking about kind of online networks, but I also really stepped up in terms of marketing my business online. So that became much more important to me as well. So I wasn't, I didn't have the, the market stall to talk to people. So it was about getting people to find my business online. And I think nowadays, if you're looking for a service or you're looking for a business, uh, a lot of people, the first place they'll turn now is an online search engine. Mm, So mm. getting your business found online takes work. And I, I put that work into kind of growing my business online. So it was kind of a two, two uh, pronged uh, growth in terms of my business, not only getting more classes and teaching more classes, um, but also growing my online presence. So uh, building uh, my own website and making sure I have um, main social media channels. And that's always been important to me to be able to kind of talk to people. So it was kind of continuing those conversations that I started in the market store, but more people getting to know me and um, sharing kind of my bread making knowledge and baking knowledge with them through my website um, and growing my business that way. So um, really building a community around my own business. So not just people who come on classes and even not just people who live locally to my business, but now having a community that's worldwide um, around my business. Yes. And, um, I have 
for example, a Facebook group for people who want to learn to bake bread at home it has about 2000 members and they're definitely not all in the UK. So yeah. Yeah, that's fun. that's fascinating for me, and it's really fantastic to get to know people through that business and get to know what they'd like to know about bread making, and that drives for me that side of my business, um, mm -hmm. helping people baking bread at home. So that's where my business has grown. Um, so, do you would when you mention the online side of it, do do you do physical classes as well? People come to a venue or to your kitchen, or where, where do they go if they were yes. physical? Yes, so absolutely. Here in Epsom, in, in Surrey, yeah, I teach bread making classes. And so, yeah, people come along. It's small classes, say up to about six people. But everyone gets kind of hands on. They get to knead their dough and um, create their bread. And as I say, in class, it's often the best moment when it comes out of the oven and they can't wait to, I'm <laughs> holding people back from their hot bread. <laughs> to do you have like a mass, in. where do you hold it? In your home? Yeah, so I have a good teaching space in my kitchen, but I think it's really important because I am teaching a skill that I want people to be able to replicate at home. So, yes. yeah, I don't have a big fancy bread oven. Um, I have a, a domestic oven and, you know, I teach people how to get the best out of their domestic oven when they're baking bread. Um, but yes, I, I want to show people that they can definitely do this in their own kitchen at home. And a lot of people, um, I think you were saying about, you know, the forefathers and you talk about bread being a kind of culture and um, going back and a lot of people talk about, you know, they may bake bread with their parents as children. Um, it can be a really nostalgic thing that people remember doing something and they perhaps haven't done it for a while or they did it at school and they've never done it since. Um, so often it's rediscovering that skill or just adding another skill to their kind of baking mm, sets. Mm. But yeah, we do it in, in. And you have a massive it, oven then. Well, not that. really just a domestic. A domestic oh, okay, oven. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm quite skilled. Timing is everything, <laughs> getting everything in and out. Oh, uh, wow. So everything's baked during the class. And, um, yeah, I think people like to be able to see that they can they can do it. And we have very minimal equipment, so I don't have anything like mixers. Um, everything's handmade. Wow. Um, so uh, just simple equipment, you know, bowl and nothing much more <laughs> and some baking <laughs> trays. Um, and, uh, yeah, and using the basics of great bread, you know, flour, mm. water, salt and yeast or sourdough starter mm -hmm. and, you know, creating lots of really beautiful breads from it so um wow. yeah so teaching here at home and occasionally i've taught in other venues in and around epsom um yeah, yeah. but always trying to keep it at a, a point where we're using a kitchen that as closely as possible replicates someone's home kitchen so yeah no no special ovens um Got although it. not, not, it's not to say it's great to, not great to use them it is because uh, I, I do enjoy continuing to learn about baking bread but i think when you're at home it's good to know that you're um you're in your own kitchen and mm. um i was thinking about that when um we traveled i have family um in the states and was very lucky to be able to go and go and visit them uh, last year and i wanted to bake bread but obviously i was baking bread in a, a kitchen that was not mine and so i had to get to know the oven um i didn't have any scales with me i had to kind of estimate when i was making the bread and hope that it turns out you know okay and estimate how much yeast and that I was putting in and I was using different flour that I'd not used before so I was using all the skills I have but I, I did get a, uh, a good sense of what it must be like if someone comes and bakes in a kitchen or maybe they've never baked bread before and um, you're rooting around in someone else's kitchen trying to find the bowl that's the right size and you don't have a, a loaf pan and <laughs> or yes. a baking yeah. sheet and I was thinking yes this is probably what it's like if you know, I felt like I was learning to bake bread again almost <laughs> because um, using an oven that I had no clue how it worked. So I think that really helps as well. It just um, gave me a, a thought like, yes, actually, uh, I think it's good when you do it as simply as possible because it just there's fewer barriers, I think, for people um, at that point. So there's fewer hurdles to overcome. Try not to put too much technology or um, Understood. You know, they, they need equipment and things like that in the way. And... and could you tell us a little bit about when you mention online, do you also, so if, if okay, so could I, for instance, because you're a long way away from me, but could I learn what you do, how you teach online as well? So could I be watching any videos? When You mentioned the Facebook group. How, how is that done online? Yeah, so I have. A lot of content so I think I started with a blog on my website and I have lots of bread making tips there and a lot of them are video tips as well as text that you can read so you could start there um, I also have 
um, on my website uh, an email series, which is kind of uh, my top five bread making tips. So if you're just getting started, it's kind of five key things to think about when you're baking bread. And you would get that email series and lots of videos and content um, to help you bake bread at home. But mm-hmm. also on my social media, um, I share that information as well. And especially on my Facebook group, which is Bake Bread at Home, um, sharing those videos um, and maybe live videos or tip videos or a tip of the week. And you would get that information. Um, but if you wanted all the information together to bake a loaf um, from start to finish, um, I do have an online course, um, as well that I'm about to launch. So then you would be able to follow me along filmed in my home kitchen and you'd get all those series of videos. Um, so it is, it is my introduction to bread making. So, um, if you're just starting out or you want to brush up your bread baking skills, yes, you could follow that along, um, from wherever you are in the world, as long as you've got an internet connection and you can watch videos, uh, you could follow along with that bread baking course. Right. So I, but I do aim um, on my social media to try and answer um, people's bread baking questions. So you could probably dip in there as well and find answers to plenty of bread baking questions on you know, any of my social media accounts or on my website. So I think it's just building that, that uh, I try to build up a, a, a good repository of information that yes. um, is answering the kind of common questions that I get asked. And in the Facebook group, I always encourage people to ask questions. And actually, when you join the group, you have the opportunity to ask me the questions you have about bread baking. And I look to answer those questions for people um, and answer the most common questions in blogs so that I can share with the many people. If I know that a lot of people are ask, asking that same question, you know, and we get things like, you know, how hot should the water be or how long should I need for or how do I know when my bread is baked or how do I know um, if it's proved enough if it's risen enough or um, why did my bread turn out so dense Mm. Uh, it didn't turn out how I wanted to so that kind of troubleshooting so it's all those kind of questions that come out from uh, when you're baking bread and sometimes it just doesn't turn out quite how you expected and I've definitely had that as well I'm not saying I've always baked great bread sometimes (laughs) it just doesn't quite turn out you might try a new recipe or you as I say you're in a new kitchen and it just doesn't quite turn how you expected it often it tastes fine though but (laughs) it might just be not what you expected but yeah for me the 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 online stuff I just I love talking to people and to getting to know what they'd like to know about bread baking and answering their questions um, and also coming up with recipes as well um, you know new, new different breads to try and because um, uh, I think you know once you master the basics there's a whole world out there of different breads that you can try so uh, tr- kind of conveying that as well mm-hmm. fantastic that sounds amazing that there are so many places where you're supporting your audience not only by giving them information and you're actually giving recipes away and things and giving them tips and also answering their questions. Um, And, you know, I I mean, I follow lots of people um, in terms of education and only yesterday I was listening to a podcast where um, a guy, you may have heard of him, Tony Robbins. Oh, yes. uh, He talked about because they, they were having this discussion about people being afraid of what the future is with artificial intelligence and all the jobs are going to go and this, that, and the other. And he says it's now a knowledge economy, um, that if you have knowledge, that you should sell your knowledge, basically. And that's exactly what you're doing. Um, you're, you're way ahead of the curve by, you know, doing something you love doing and then packaging that up and selling it to people to learn themselves. And of course, the best place nowadays, particularly in this country, because we're this country is ahead of the world curve in terms of learning online as well. Um, you said you're going to be doing some of this online, which is which is brilliant. So well done, you. <laughs> Thanks. In such a short space of time as well. Well, I, I, I think, uh, well, I, I definitely agree. I think the online, I mean, who doesn't now turn to a search engine when they want to do something? They, how do I X? You know, yes. and invariably you get your YouTube video up. And, yes. Um, uh, you'll find out how to fix whatever you wanted to fix or put up your blinds or whatever it is you needed to, <laughs> to yes. do. Yes. Um, and you know, there is there is stuff out there for everyone. And I think, uh, yes, I could just have the content. But actually, what I also enjoy is engaging my audience. And I think mm. that's so 
important um, in today's, in, you know, in today's online world, especially that um, actually having a voice for my business and, you know, um, being able to chat to people and show that I am a person behind, you know, that blog they've just read, yeah. and, you know, that, um, they can actually chat to me and ask questions and building those relationships. And um, I think it's interesting during this chat that it's talking about how I'm always curious to find out about people. I think that that drives it almost that I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm always interested to hear how people are baking bread at home and what they're doing and what they're making. And, you know, can, can I add that into something that I can do at home. And I think once you think, oh, I might be interested in that, there's probably going to be other people that are interested in that. And so mm. when you're, build, you know, I'm building that community in my group and on my on, online channels. Um, but yes, I agree with that, that, you know, that thing that the podcast you were listening to about the knowledge economy, that it's very true. I think uh, we're probably more connected than ever before by the online world. And, mm. and yeah. that's probably reflected by the fact that people not just in, even in the UK, but all over the world are joining my group and asking questions and sending, you know, sending me emails to find out more about how they can bake bread because they're actually all encountering similar problems wherever they live in the yeah. world. Yeah. And that's, that's bringing that community together to kind of help each other solve those issues, albeit they're baking bread issues, but that can be really important to someone. They, you know, they, they, there's that movement to people to turn to making their own food and to finding out more about what goes into their food. And people are just more interested in getting back into those skills. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's growing like never before, mm. uh, online and tapping into it. Um, people might say, well, I'm giving away a lot of content for free. Well, yes, I probably am. Um, yeah. But uh, I think it's important to build that relationship. It's pretty much exactly the same as me having that conversation at the market stall that, you know, um, I'm being helpful to people and building that relationship first. And then along the way, if they're interested in finding out more, I do have something else that can help them. And um, my kind of what I would like to do is expand that offer to people and to be able to produce things that my audience want um, in in terms of learning, um, yes, yeah. So something else I've introduced recently is um, a lot of questions about sourdough baking. So that's a specific part of bread baking. Yes. Um, and I've had a lot of questions about that. So I've uh, now have also a download about starting your own sourdough starter mm. and mm. making that, and, and and that brings more people into <laughs> asking me questions. Do you do you think that the the Bake Off and Paul Hollywood and and the likes have actually brought have 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 helped you because people are more interested because they're watching these kind of programs. Uh, absolutely, you um, got a lot to thank Bake Off for. I mean, it's grown in the last ten, eleven years, and um, it's really brought baking back to the forefront of people's minds. And I definitely think it's driven a surge in people wanting to learn to bake. And mm. something like bread baking is very popular across you know, many different, you know, it's, it's something that a lot of people want to get into. Yes. And, um, you know, they always cover bread baking on the Bake Off. Yeah. And um, it's always um, very popular. And you have a lot of people sitting at home. I follow it along. I comment on it on on uh, Twitter mainly. And, yes. um, and, you know, a lot of people sitting at home drooling over the bakes, but bread especially. I think everyone can imagine, like you say, that smell that they pump out in the supermarkets. It's for a reason. It's probably one of the most popular smells alongside things like cut grass that yes. people love to reminisce about and they all mm. want to be at home with their bread coming out of the oven. So definitely Bake Off really helps put it at the forefront of people's minds. And I think there's the other thing as well about um, not just um, learning the skills, but having the experience, because I think we also have that alongside the the knowledge economy we also have the growth in people wanting to kind of do things and learn go out and experience things with people so having that experience I often get people come on a course with uh, a family member or a friend and it's actually a day out for them so um or they buy it as a gift for someone yes you know and um I think that there's a lot of that as well now that um um it's really popular as a as part of that kind of experience packages rather than buying something for some a thing for someone that they actually go out and spend time with people and actually it's bizarre in that the growth of uh, those economies are driven online but people then want to take their experiences offline and actually meet up in person and experience something and produce something tangible at the end of it yeah, um, yeah. so uh, it's a really fascinating kind of growth of two different economies there okay so um what's what's the big plan Rhiannon what so it's you at the moment, right? You've got two young children, did you say as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, you, I mean, 
it's only one of you. You can't, you know, duplicate yourself, uh, clone yourself. But I, what's, have you got a vision for how this could grow for you? Well, I think it's, for me, it's more um, doing more for what my audience would like. So um, a first online course, and then right. I'd like to um, launch that and um, see it successfully launched. And then um, I think there are other one other um, aspects of the questions I'm getting asked that I'd like to answer for people and, and grow that side of it for me and really build the community about around supporting people who want to bake bread at home. Right. So I, I see that as, a, as, you know, the potential there. Um, and yes, I am only me. But I think in terms of where I've built networks online, I know many other small business owners and a lot of them, you know, for example, the, the virtual assistant um, role mm. that's grown. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think I have a lot of people who I know I can start to approach for support as I yes. perhaps need more help in my business. So I think there are aspects of my business that I may start to um, get support for um, because, yeah, I think once you grow, you kind of, you need to do that. I think you have yeah. to be realistic in business that, and I think if you listen to a lot of business owners, um, they, they'll often say outsource quicker than you think you need to um, because it will really help because it takes away perhaps a job that, that someone else can do quite easily mm. for you without mm. affecting how your business is portrayed and gives you the time to focus on what's next, what's over there on the horizon. So I agree. Uh, yeah. So I think, I think um, that's, uh, that's part of it for me. Um, another aspect of my business, so going back to the the bread angels course i i now teach that that course as well so people can learn to set up their own bread bakery from home for me f from me as well and obviously they get to come and learn that in my own home so again it's they can see that it can be done in a home uh, environment um so um i think expanding on that as well i provide support to uh, small and startup food uh, and bakery businesses who want to grow their business through having an effective online presence so using right. their social media to grow their business so mm -hmm. that's something as well I think because I've really put a lot into growing my social media and learning and training to um, actually use my social media effectively and my online presence I'm now kind of passing on those skills as well to people so that's a kind of I don't know what we're up to now like a third part of my business so yes kind of supporting. <laughs> I mean that's <laughs> brilliant because yeah. that's back to the knowledge economy again yeah <laughs> and and yeah, you may be starting with physical classes, how how to people to get to do that. But again, um, you can put all of that knowledge online as well. And there are food businesses all over the world who can learn from what you've done, right? Yes, it's a um, it's a universal thing, isn't it? Food. Mm. I think it's a common language that uh, food is something you can share with other people very easily and. Um, like lang like language it's a way into understanding more about people and um, getting to know them that if you sit down and quite literally we say we bake break uh, we break bread together that's hard to say um you know but it's a, <laughs> it's a it's a way of saying that you get down and get, you, you sit down and get to know somebody and um i think yeah it's a, a another way of kind of finding out about people and, and being able to support them so um yes yeah, so for me it's just a, a constant kind of getting to know people and building that that audience for my business, but also being able to offer products that will actually help them. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I was going to mention this. I mentioned right at the, the top of the interview, I would tell you about myself. Well, I'm, I'm originally from the Netherlands, Amsterdam, mm -hmm. and bread is quite a big thing. And I grew up. It's fantastic there. Yeah. Oh, my God. I grew up with yeah, you can call me bread boy, basically. A, a bread was just like <laughs> my addiction, you know. My father introduced us to the kind of Jewish bakeries in Amsterdam. And, you know, every Sunday morning, um, my father would took, take me into the centre of Amsterdam to a bake on a Sunday morning. The bakery would open and bake fresh kind of bread rolls. And we would like get because we had there was four kids in the family so we'd buy like 40 rolls four zero and bring that home and just my father had had a thing about bread as well because he, he would he would liken it to cake because these bread rolls would be hot still by the time we got I mean piping hot they were they would still be hot by the time we got home and just put butter and have the butter melt on these bread rolls I'm like 
salivating even just I'm thinking laughing. about it. <laughs> and so I've been addicted to bread all my life. But the only downside, Rhiannon, is that it, I put on weight as a result of it. And 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 bread's been it's been my kind of Achilles heel all my life. And only in the past couple of years have I been able to kind of, you know, reduce the amount of bread that I used to eat. I mean, I like any types of bread, anything, you know, um, <laughs> just give me bread and butter. I'll be happy. If I went to jail and they said, all you could have is bread and butter, I would go, yeah, happy days. <laughs> well, I was going to ask if you baked your own bread. No, I I've no. the only time we've ever baked bread is in a ridiculous bread maker. And we only did that for like a month. And now it's with my mother-in-law, the bread maker. Yeah. So I've never learned how to make fresh bread. I've never learned how to bake it in your own oven. Um, no, I've never done it. And I'm, I, I probably will sign up for your course when it comes out um, <laughs> because I'm a I'll long way know. from Epsom to to come on a physical course. Yeah. But I would love to. I, I was as we were chatting, or even before I was on your website looking at some of your blogs posts and I saw one for Stalin and oh, yeah. I can't get in this country d proper Dutch Christmas Stalin which hasn't got the rum in it okay um it's got the marzipan in it but the Dutch Stalin is like I can never find it here you know I've even in some years I've even thought about importing it and it's so expensive <laughs> getting it shipped you know from Holland but for mere for mere pence, you could make your own. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I've bookmarked that post. I'm going to have to try next Christmas. I'm glad to hear. Well, maybe start practicing now. Maybe I know it's not traditionally the time for Stollen, but <laughs> doesn't matter. I can eat at any time. You can eat yeah. at any time. Yeah. Or uh, bread freezes amazingly well. So uh, yes. so you could just put all your practice loaves in the freezer for for Christmas time. But yeah. what I would say about baking your own, I think um, I think bread does get this kind of press about you know you say about the weight gain. I think yes. when you bake your own. You do make it just with the flour, water, salt and yeast, and mm. it makes a very nutri nutrient dense loaf. And right. so I think um, I struggle. Um, so we make bread rolls uh, for lunch on yes. all of my courses. And like you were over the roll, remembering the rolls from your childhood, people are salivating over them as soon as they come out of the oven. And it's a bit torturous because I have to say, well, we've got to do a bit more bread making before we can have lunch <laughs> and let them cool down. Um, but, you know, people dive onto them as soon as we go and sit down for lunch. But actually, people generally can only eat one or two because they're, they're not because they're dense, but because, um, you know, they're just nutrient rich. Um, rolls and actually right. it's, it's a bit hard you do get full up after mm. one or two so mm. maybe if, you know you start baking your own you might find that uh, <laughs> you yes. you will have you'll have great bread but you might actually eat a tiny bit less of it because it will fill you up but um, yes yes yeah i think yes. uh, if you are going to start i would say um i think if i if i was talking if i'm talking to someone who's just starting baking bread mm. some things to watch out for would be uh Firstly, embrace the stickiness because bread bread dough is meant to be sticky and wet, mm. and it will stick to your hands and it will stick to the work surface. And you can uh, uh, what ways of getting around that? You can wet your hands slightly, um, mm. or um, use a bit a tiny um, smear of olive oil as well can help. Mm -hmm. um, but really, just keep going with the kneading because the flour absorbs the water quite slowly, so it's quite sticky at the start. And people are so tempted to throw flour all over it, but all you're going to do is dry your dough out, and then you'll end up making a brick in the oven yes. uh, so if you do start baking bread that would be my kind of top tip but also time um you don't rush bread making mm. uh mm. you know I, I think having two small children is a, a great way to make bread because I, I i tend to make dough and then i have to leave it for several hours yes um, yes while i'm attending to other life <laughs> challenges emergencies <laughs> uh, yes just a general life family mm. life um and so but yeah, you know, your bread will be fine um, if it's a relative, you know, and you can, you can just leave it on your kitchen counter if your kitchen count if your kitchen's you know, eighteen to twenty degrees, maybe maybe a bit warmer with the heating on at this time of year. Mm -hmm. Leave it there for a couple of hours as it as it proves, um, and um, don't worry, don't feel like you're wedded 
to the process. You might obviously you'll be reading a book and it will say like until it's doubled in size or maybe an hour. That's fine. But whoever wrote that had a different kitchen to you. They were working at a different temperature. They were working with different ingredients. So yes. it is a bit of a, a relative. You know, you can. But I would say, especially at this time of year, you can, you know, once you've kneaded together your dough, leave it for a, a couple of hours, let it rise really well and then shape your loaf or your buns and uh, leave them to rise well again. Um, for a good got 45 it. minutes to an hour. Well, and I, say, <laughs> I, I, I say I've got it, work. but no, I, I forget all of this that you've just said. I know I can listen back to it on the <laughs> podcast, but um, it, it's it's really, really amazing and, and so interesting. And I think it's a great business metaphor as well, bread baking. And you're, you're combining building a business with bread making, which I think is just wonderful. I think it's really brave as well. It's something you love doing anyway, mm -hmm. um, which is also really important for people to do what they love. So, you know, well done to you. So tell, tell us then, where can people find you and sign up for your, I think you mentioned something about uh, some tips and, and things like that, and how can they get hold of you? How can they book on your courses? Give us and all the social media where you are and your groups and everything. I'll put it all in the show notes anyway, but if you just share it verbally as well. Sure. Well, so I, my business is called The Epsom Bakehouse. And if you go to uh, www.theepsombakehouse.co.uk, um, you'll find my website and you can sign up on the website. There's a, a sign up link on the right hand side of it, each page or there is a pop up as well. For the, and that will send you the bread making tips. Um, I do also have um, a sourdough starter sign up. Um, so if you uh, send me an email or contact me through the website, um, I can send you a link to sign up for that if you're interested in getting started on sourdough starter. Um, and then if you look on uh, any of the main social media, so Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, if you look for um, the Epsom Bakehouse or Epsom Bakehouse, you'll find me there. Right. And my Facebook group is called Bake Bread at Home. So do come along and join in the chat there. Um, and yeah, um, you'll you'll find lots of uh, hints and tips there online. And um, if you want to find out more about the online course I'm launching that's coming in March, um, I'm sure I'll be posting more online um, or you, <laughs> you can sign up for my email list as well. Well, when that comes out, by the way, um, do give me the link to that and I will add it to the show notes. I can edit it and add it in. Thank you. Um, it's, there's probably going to be a link on your website to it anyway. So as sure. long, so people can, you know, put a little diary uh, note, say in March sometime, go and have a look at the Epsom Bakehouse or co.uk and to see where the course is, when the course is live. How Indeed. exciting. And if you're in, if you're in or near Surrey or if you know anyone who is, um, I, obviously I do have classes listed as well. So if you want to learn to bake bread with me, you can find out more about them on my website as well. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Anything else that we haven't covered, Rhiannon, that, that people need to know about? No, but um, it's been fantastic chatting to you today and I'm still drooling over the sound of those bread rolls in <laughs> Holland. It's, it's, somewhere I need, it's somewhere I need to go and uh, eat bread, I think. Um, if you haven't been, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah. you must go. You know, <laughs> there, there's a bread and this will sound really weird, but I still remember this bread and I've since the age of 17, when I came over to this country, I've still not been able to find it anywhere. And I don't even, I don't even think they do it in, in Amsterdam anymore. Or, um, there, was, there was a bread that had a tiny bit of salt in it. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, actually, like inside it? Yeah, inside the bread. Oh. And you would go, ooh, that, you know. But it, it had the most bizarre but wonderful taste and i remember as a kid i that i don't my dutch is n not as good as it used to be but it's something like called dovekater or okay. something and literally translated as dove something yeah. and it was just amazing they do the most bizarre but you need to find a proper baker bakery rather than the supermarket and you know just have a chat with them and find out what they're doing but yeah the dutch do make some very very unusual breads that's definitely definitely the case yeah it's a great part of the of the, the heritage there and i think people often think of 
France as having fantastic bread, which of course they do, and but also somewhere like Germany and 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 uh, the Dutch as well have this great bread tradition, and there's so many different types of bread like you've just described, and uh, I think you can only go there and marvel at it, to be honest. And yeah. I love I love that that's kind of coming back. I mean, it didn't really go away, but it's coming back into the forefront here in the UK that people are getting really into baking those different breads but yeah that one sounds unusual i'm going to keep an eye out for that i'll be asking my networks if anyone's heard of it or bakes it so if i find it i will point you in the right direction if i i've, I've just looked online i found it it's oh. it, it is called dover carter it's spelled d-u-i-v-e k-a-t-e-r and wow. yeah and it does say well i mean you do put salt in bread don't you in the, in the yes, definitely in the dough, but you, it sounds like it's kind of wrapped around an actual pinch of salt in it. And well, it says on the on the recipe it says two teaspoons of salt. Okay, so well, that's not much. That's not much, is it? No. Yeah. So maybe, um, yeah, it, it's a really, it's got ah, I know what it is. Three <laughs> cups, three cups of cake flour. Oh, so it's quite light. Yeah, cake flour, all-purpose flour, milk. Ye tablespoon, two teaspoons, active dry yeast, sugar, uh, powdered milk, butter, zest of a lemon, one egg. So, yes, yeah, so it's quite a traditional um, kind of enriched, you know, when we put milk and butter and things, we put fats in, we call it an enriched bread mm. um, for a celebratory bread. It is a celebratory, that, that's what it mm. says, yeah. But the lemon as well. Mm. Mm. Anyway. So you got the spelling. Everybody else has now as well. So, <laughs> so we can look it up, and I'll, I'll be attempting that one next. I love Go trying. Go check it out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. It's really been wonderful chatting about bread and what you're up to. It sounds incredible, and and I love the topic, of course, because I love bread. <laughs> You're ready for lunch now. Well, thank you so much for having me on, Michael. It's been, fa been fantastic to chat and uh, I look forward to listening back to it. Thank you so much, Rihanna. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.